In this video, we're going to talk about how computers handle memory management. My name is Kevin Wei, and I'm here to help you land your dream job in tech. Different systems employ different techniques for memory management, each with their own advantages and disadvantages. Being able to speak to the pros and cons of each may be helpful in your upcoming technical interviews. Before we get too deep into it, if you're enjoying these tech interview prep videos, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for new videos every single week. It might seem meaningless, but doing these things really help the algorithm find our content. Memory management deals with how systems allocate and free a memory during the execution of a program. Older languages like C or C++ don't have any kind of automatic memory management. Developers had to allocate and release memory explicitly by calling malloc and free in C and new and delete in C++. A critical requirement for managing memory is that each allocation is matched to exactly one deallocation. If the developer forgets to release allocated memory, the system can't reclaim it and the memory leaks, which means it becomes unusable until the program terminates. Over time, this results in the program running out of memory and crashing, which would be especially problematic if it were to happen on a critical server or in the operating system. Similarly, if the developer accidentally attempts to release previously deallocated memory, it might end up releasing memory that's currently in use, leading to unpredictable and often disastrous consequences. Though manual memory management adds the least amount of overhead to the program, it also results in the most bugs because it relies on developers remembering to manually call the appropriate deallocation functions. This has led to many issues in the past. Therefore, most modern programming languages have automatic memory management mechanisms. The two most common patterns are garbage collection and automatic reference counting. Let's dive deeper into these two patterns and first talk about garbage collection. Garbage collection is the most common pattern for deallocating memory. It's used by Java, Go, and many other modern languages. When the system detects that a program is running low on memory, it pauses execution of the program and runs a garbage collector, which marks all of the in-use memory in the program, compacts the heap by moving all reachable memory to the beginning of the heap, updates references to the new locations, and finally releases all unreachable memory. The garbage collector also optimizes the number of times it runs by figuring out which memory is short-lived and which has to persist for longer. It does so by assigning a generation to each piece of memory. Memory that persists across multiple runs of the garbage collector is promoted from generation to generation. The garbage collector clears older generations much less frequently because it knows this storage will likely persist through the lifetime of the process. Let's now cover automatic reference counting, the other common way to ensure automatic memory management. With automatic reference counting, a reference count to each piece of allocated memory is maintained as the program executes. When a variable refers to an object in memory, the reference count of that object is incremented. When the variable stops referencing the object, the reference count is decremented. When the reference count of an object reaches zero, the memory is immediately freed. This approach is used by Apple in both Objective-C and Swift on iOS. Garbage collection is the most developer-friendly option since it removes the mental overhead of managing references. However, it could result in the program being paused at random points during execution. This makes it less suitable for real-time and user interactive apps. This is a big reason why Apple prefers to use automatic reference counting in iOS. The developer overhead is higher here because it requires the developer to be conscious about inadvertently creating reference cycles, which causes memory leaks and it requires additional space to store the reference count per object, which comes with a little bit of extra overhead. But it does work better for very interactive apps. I hope this helped paint a picture of how memory management works. In most situations, the development team will not have a choice in which memory management strategy to use, since that will be dictated by the language that the project is built on. But developers would need to figure out how to optimize the experience based on the limitations of the language or the platform. For more interview prep content, Exponent has the best resources to help you ace your interview, including in-depth interview courses, private coaching, and a community of experts ready to help you prep for even the toughest questions. Hit that subscribe button for new videos every single week and go to tryexponent.com to become a member today. Thanks for watching.